Hello everyone and welcome to Fertility Chats with Vitalab and it is our second episode that we're recording with Dr. Lawrence Gobetz and we are in the Santon offices. Okay, so today we are discussing egg aging and freezing and with your experience being part of Vitalab since 1990, I'm sure you can tell us quite a bit about that process. And um, why is it important, who is it important for, and why? Thanks Nadia for the introduction. Welcome to Johannesburg, nice to have you here. Thank you. So I think the, the most important thing is that people out there don't understand biology. Yeah. And male biology is very different to female mm -hmm. biology. Yeah. So the testicles got stem cells, and every day we make stem cells, new stem cells, Every day we make on average 200 million new sperm a day until the day we are buried or perhaps you bring us home in a glass vase and you put us on a <laughs> mantelpiece. The ovary is different. Yeah. Um, when you're a young female fetus in your mother's womb, you're given your total basket of eggs and that's around 6 million. And it can differ from person to Plus person. minus the same in female fetuses. but what differs is how quickly you're going to lose those eggs because you have no stem cells in your ovary. Okay. When you're born your basket's down to one million. Um, so there's genetic programming within your ovaries that your eggs die off every month sure. and as you get older the eggs are equal to your age plus nine months because they were in your ovaries before you were born. Yeah. That is why women ultimately run out of eggs and they then go into the menopause because the eggs is the source of where the hormones come from. Now what we do know is this genetic programming. In other words, when your father's sperm fertilizes your mother's egg, you were given a genetic age or an egg age as to how quickly you're going to lose your egg number. Not only that, we can't slow down the fact that those eggs are aging. And the eggs that you would release this month are equal to your age plus nine months. Your eggs are older than you. And the, the function of the ovaries for one reason, it's ready for reproduction. Yes, it does give off hormones, etc. But at the end of the day, it's for reproduction. And its peak is somewhere between 16 and 26. And I always say when I grew up, my mother at 22 with all her poker friends around the table, they all had three kids at home by yeah. 22, but today it is not the case. Yeah. So the single most important issue that we are faced with is older women delaying their childbearing and then having more difficulty in achieving natural conception. Yes, so a lot of the women lately first established their career and then in their 30s they only think about starting a family, Correct. which is after the peak period. Not only that, I say, they marry the computer. After five years, the computer breaks. <laughs> so they grow, go to Incredible Connection and they get another computer and it takes another five years before they really settle down and say, okay, now we're ready for children. And you're looking at average age of women crossing our threshold here or some in the region of 36 to 38. And we often get 44-year-olds that sit down and say, but there's nothing wrong with me. Why can't you help me? Yes, those people we can now, but the only way to help them is with donor eggs. So you need to get eggs from a younger female, the husband's sperm or partner's sperm, and achieve an embryo, and then put that embryo back into that woman. Now, the womb doesn't necessarily age like the eggs. So a woman who's in her mid-40s, we can get her pregnant. But she has to be willing to then consider going with donor eggs. Mm -hmm. Which won't be her genetics, because it's not her DNA. Well, it's not a DNA, but someone else is giving her a cell, one cell, mm -hmm. to help her have her own baby. Yeah. And she's going to carry yeah. that baby for nine months and bond with that baby and give birth to that baby. So, And there are many other things that contribute to the baby rather than just, well, it's not my DNA. Yes. And interestingly, there's a lot of DNA coming from grandmother, great-grandmother, seven generations back down your mother's lineage of DNA in your body that goes to your baby. 
Okay, so it is so actually there's, 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 you still carry over your own genetics. Absolutely, and then you're going to, from outside epigenetically, you're going to change that baby because mm -hmm. that baby's going to grow up with you and develop your mannerisms yeah. and how you discipline the child, etc. You know, so it's not as simple as saying, well, it's not my DNA, yeah. so I can't do it. Very interesting. So can you talk us through the process? So say I come into your office today and I'm saying I want to freeze my eggs. What is the process like? How long does it take? What can I expect from the process? Okay, so we look at ovaries to get an idea or understanding of what is your egg reserve like. So we know when we scan an ovary, if we had to stimulate that ovary to get more than one egg, because every month there's a hundred to a thousand eggs entering a race, only one wins the race and all the others die off. Um. We've learned the correlation of how to rescue some of those eggs that are going to die off. So what we do there is we scan the ovaries and we count the little circles in your ovaries which we call the antral follicle count. Now if I see eight in the left ovary and eight in the right ovary, I know I'm going to get 16 eggs from you. So it's quite simple for us to work out how many eggs the ovaries should respond to mm -hmm. and how many we'll be able to rescue. We'll never be able to rescue a thousand. Mm -hmm. Very rarely will we get more than maybe 30, 32 eggs. So at the end of the day, we try to get good quality eggs. It takes about 10 or 11 days of injections. Mm -hmm. And those injections you administer to yourself every day. And that then rescues the eggs that would have been lost in that cycle. Now, the next thing is the age of the female, because if you're 42, what's important to understand is at 42, I need between 12 and 15 eggs to find one normal egg because of the older eggs and the poor genetic potential. But if you are 26 or 28, one in two eggs will be normal. So the younger you put your eggs in the freezer, the better. And we try and discourage women over the age of 38 from putting the eggs in the freezer because it's, it's, it's usually a worthless exercise. Number-wise, we need a lot of eggs. A younger woman, we need less eggs. And ultimately, it's a matter of if you're going to freeze your eggs, you want to try and achieve maybe two babies from them. Yeah. So sometimes the patient will need two stimulations or sometimes even three stimulations. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Is, can you do it more than one? You can, you can. But then your expense starts yeah. to mount. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't harm you in any way. Mm -hmm. The one danger of stimulating a patient to get eggs out of her is a condition called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. That is something that we've been through. We've got the t-shirt. We know how to control it. We can stop it from ever happening. So we very, very rarely ever see that anymore. We used to have young donors that we would have to admit to ICU. We would have to pay for it because the recipient couple were not going to pay for it. And at the end of the day, yes, it happens still daily because doctors don't appropriately stimulate and know how to do the final maturation injection. So 10 or 11 days of injections. We scan maybe two or three times during that period to see how they are growing. And once the egg sacs, which is what we see, we're not seeing the eggs because the eggs are microscopic, but we're seeing the housing that the egg is in. And there's a correlation between the size of the egg, I mean the size of the sac and the ripeness of the egg. And when you've had that amount of stimulation and we've got the right size egg sacs, we give a final trigger, 36 hours later, we bring you into our IVF suite, we administer conscious sedation, you sleep, you don't feel any pain, it literally, literally takes seven to 10 minutes. You wake up in our unit with a little sticker on your hand at a number because the patient's short-term memory goes for a loop and they keep asking everybody in the ward <laughs> how many eggs did they get. So now we okay. put a sticker on your hand and you can look at that number as often as you want to. Probably within a half an hour to an hour later you get up and you go home. We just don't allow you to drive a car. So we want to see the color of the eyes of the person fetching you because that conscious station affects your reaction time. But from the next day you can do whatever you want. So if you had gone through the process of freezing your eggs and you want to have a baby, does that mean you're going to have to have it via IVF? Correct. Okay. Correct. Because there's no other way that you're able to use oh. those eggs. And when we freeze the eggs, we have to take the coating of cells around the egg mm. 
that protects the egg under normal circumstances for the sperm to fertilize the eggs naturally. So in this situation, we have to do egg seal. Okay. Those eggs can be frozen for as many years as you That's want to. That's my next question. Yeah. How long can you freeze the eggs? We can freeze eggs for as long as you want to. You can donate them to your great-grandchildren. Sure. Okay. Should you so choose. Yeah. The oldest embryo that we had frozen in this unit that achieved the pregnancy was 14 years in our freezer. Wow. And one must understand freezing is in liquid nitrogen. There's no electricity. Mm. So when you're in South Africa, you worry that with power outage, mm. will my eggs That's disappear? So it's there's no electricity involved. Okay. okay. And then, um, we know today everything's getting expensive. So does medical aid cover this procedure of harvesting and freezing your eggs? So it, it took quite a while and we eventually got it right with Discovery. Only two of the premium plans actually cover. Um, initially it was for IVF. It okay. does appear that they are going ahead and are going to help young girls also contribute towards freezing their eggs. Um, some of the medical aids, CAMAF, which is a chartered accountant's medical aid does. Others will if you motivate, but most of the others at the moment have not followed the same path that Discovery has followed. So sometimes it is out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. And you know, that could be somewhere between 50 and up to 80,000 Rand, depending on what we're doing. Sure. Okay. And say I come in and I want to have that done. Would you do any checks beforehand to see if there's no other issues? Like for instance, you've got a septum in your womb or how does polycystic ovary syndrome affect that? Are there any issues that needs to be sorted out prior to harvesting the eggs? So yes, you have, you have to see the patient, you have to scan and look at the ovaries and do what we call an antral follicle count. We do have a blood test that can also correlate with how many eggs we will be able to recover and that is called AMH or anti-malarian hormone. You do a blood test today, we've got a result tomorrow. That correlates with the number of little circles that we would see on ultrasound. The only time really that I do an AMH is if they're very few, just to show the patient that there's really nothing and it's going to be a useless exercise. But if there are lots of antral follicle counts, you don't, I mean, antral follicles, you don't have to go and spend over a thousand rand for one blood test. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, there are two hormones in your body that could affect your egg quality. One is your thyroid function and the second is prolactin. Prolactin is the milk hormone. It also responds to stress and that's the hormone that stops women from falling pregnant when they're breastfeeding. And you don't have to be pregnant and you don't have to be near a baby and yet that hormone can be elevated. Okay. Polycystic ovaries is like um, mixed feelings for me because number one, you've got a very, very good antral follicle count. Mm. But in those patients we get many eggs but we get a complete mixed bag and it's often a quality issue of the eggs. But in your number of eggs, it may be 20, 22 eggs, and we try and stimulate polycystic ovarian patients a lot gentler mm -hmm. than the usual run of the Malami of patient, because it seems like if we get lots of eggs, we're going to get a big batch of bad quality. We will get some good quality, and those patients do very well with IVF. They really do. So ultimately, if you cannot get those ovaries to work for a single egg every month, you can go IVF for the polycystic ovary patients, and they do exceptionally. Sure. Um, my last question to you is, in the case of a patient being diagnosed with cancer and they would like to preserve their fertility, what would you suggest to them? It's a very good question and it's something that's becoming uh, very topical today. Mm -hmm. Our unit is part of the Oncology Consortium, which is an international group where we are promoting preservation for oncology patients, for both males and females. because. In most cases where they are going to get chemotherapy mm -hmm. that's going to wipe out the eggs. Mm -hmm. So we can then stimulate, freeze the eggs, they can then go and have their chemo, they can survive their cancer and then we can make embryos and get them pregnant. And same for the males, if they're going to get onto chemo that's going to affect their sperm production, we put their sperm in the freezer. So we want everyone out there to know because lots of people have friends today that they know are having cancer treatment but they were never given any counselling with regards to, you know, we can preserve your potential. Yeah. So with the oncology 
uh, consortium we have got out now to oncologists and they have become very much more willing to actually let the patient come and have a consult with us. We have an emergency number, we see those patients within 24 hours to get them sorted out, get the eggs in the freezer as soon as we possibly can so that they can then start their chemotherapy. Sure, that's really interesting. And then um, one last thing, so you say that it is best to freeze your eggs between a certain age. So if you've done that, is there a certain age or cutoff on when to implant it back? Like you say, like the womb doesn't age like the eggs. So when would you advise to, what is the latest that you can push your when pregnancy you're ready. to? When you're ready. Okay. And the next thing is there is no legal age limit that we have to stop treating females. We have a recommendation from our society, the SASOG, uh, South African Society for Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and our SASREG, which is our infertility society, to say up until they are turning 50, that's the last time you can put embryos back into the uterus. Now, they may then want to use a surrogate because they're older. And, you know, the question is, who should, why should we be the gatekeepers as to when women should want to have their babies, you know? You could be 23, have a baby, and a year later you die in a car crash, you know? And today people are living to beyond mid-80s, early 90s, you know? So, yeah, it's a very contentious issue as to the age of the female. Some patients, as they get older, do develop polyps in the womb. They can develop fibroids in the uterus, so they may need to have that uterus worked on and then managed. You did ask a question about septums in the uterus. Now, when you're freezing eggs, you don't need to worry about the oven. Okay. And when you need the oven is when we'll need to fix the septum or take out the fibroid or remove the polyp. Because none of that is cancer, none of that will become cancer, so that you can leave. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Lawrence. Is there any take-home message that you would like to give to the viewers? Yeah, and I think the most important thing is for young women to understand their biology, because they don't correlate how they're feeling with regards to what's happening in the ovaries mm -hmm. and what's happening with the eggs. So when you tell the 24-year-old it's a good idea to put your eggs in the freezer, so there's nothing wrong with me, yeah. maybe I'll find Mr. Rock when I'm 40 and it'll all come together. And unfortunately it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of breaking through the current barrier of our young females who still think there is no need to worry about it. And not only our young females, our gynecologists, when they scan a 40-year-old, they say, your ovaries look blue, beautiful. You've still got another good five years to have a baby. That's completely the wrong information. Yeah. So the younger you are and the younger you can understand this, the better your outcome. So the younger the eggs in the freezer, the better the chances are you'll take home a baby from those frozen eggs. Yeah, so I think it's quite important for every young woman to have a consult with a gynecologist or a specialist just to see where they're at, where they're heading, and what they should do for them specifically. Great. Thank you so much for um, having me today, and we look forward to our next episode. Thanks and so um, please remember to like and follow all the social media handles, and to press the bell just so that you are alerted for the next episode.